Hi everyone, it's Nicole. Today we're going to be creating fast and effective lessons using a Google Slides add-on called Pear Deck. Pear Deck can make lessons very interactive and engaging for students, which is perfect for distance learning. If you haven't already, make sure you press the subscribe button to stay updated with weekly videos. All right, let's get started. The first thing we need to do is go to add-ons. And if you haven't downloaded Pear Deck yet, make sure you go to get add-ons to get um, Pear Deck. We'll just go to Pear Deck and open it up. Let's take a look at the Pear Deck panel that pops up. The first button we see is the Start Lessons button, which is what's going to be replacing our Present button that we normally use for Google Slides. When we press on Start Lesson, we have two options that come up. The first option is to have a student-paced activity. This is when students move through the slides at their own pace, or you can have an instructor-paced activity where you as the instructor can control the pace of the lesson. You can use this virtually or you can use it in your classroom. The next thing we see is our template library. This is where I highly recommend you go to to find the content for your lessons. There are so many great ideas in there and you just need to adjust the slides to cater for your own students. The next thing we have is a section where you can ask students to engage with a question in a variety of formats. So you can ask students, for example, to type a text response. And lastly, we have an add audio section where you can add audio to the slides. So this is great for distance learning. The first thing that we're going to be doing is creating a question from scratch and then choosing one of these options. So the question I'm going to have is, is it possible for humans to travel to the moon in one month. Okay, so this is just to address any prior knowledge or misconceptions that students may have. Okay, and I want this to be a choice question where students have a few options to choose from. The first option is going to be yes. The second option is going to be no. Let's update slide. And what we see is a panel at the bottom here. This is a panel that must be on your slide, so make sure you don't remove this bar, otherwise the slide doesn't become interactive anymore. Let's go ahead and create another slide. We'll be using our template library from now on, and this is where I recommend you go to find most, if not all, the content for your lesson. We have some lesson builders here, so we have some slides for the beginning, during, and the end of the lesson. We have learning development question, critical thinking questions, um, social emotional learning questions, and then subject area questions. So the first thing we'll do is go to the lesson starters. And there are a couple of options over here. You'll see that once you have a slide option, it also tells you how the students will be responding to the slide. So for example, I'm going to click on this question over here. And for this question, this is going to ask students to draw on the slide. So it's a drawing slide. Okay, so draw or type two things that you already know about today's topic. If you like, you can change this. So you can say about yesterday's topic. And there you go. Let's go ahead and add another slide. So during the lesson, there are options over here as well. So we can have students create a mind map and this is a drawing slide as well. We can change anything on the slide. So for example, if you don't want to write central idea here, you can just have ideas. There are draggable slides as well. For slides during the lesson, I do recommend that you use some critical thinking questions, which is under learning development. And these slides are generally drawing slides, so students can draw their responses or they can also type in text. So let's choose this one. This one is considering different viewpoints. Okay, and this is what it looks like. I will show you from the student perspective as well. Now let's go to the subject area questions. So let's take, for example, mathematics. There are a range of slides that you can use for maths. So this is a really good one. For this slide here, you might want students to solve some sort of word problem or algebraic problem. So I'm just going to write a question up here. So 2x equals to 8, something like that. And you might want to say find x or just solve is fine. You can then ask students to draw a graph. 
Okay, so we can write a problem up here. So we'll just write x is equal to 1, something like that. Let's go ahead to another subject area. So let's say that you teach science. And for the science slides, we can have the periodic table of elements. You can have students draw the hydrogen atom, um, draw different graphs, label, diagrams, and so forth. I'll just press on this one, which is a labeling question. And students can draw their own lines to label the diagram. OK. You can definitely rearrange these slides and also add your own images. So we'll just delete that. I'm just going to keep this um, diagram for my example. OK, so let's go back to find some different examples as well. So let's say we do world languages. And in world languages, we can have this draggable slide, which asks students to identify the Spanish speaking countries. And of course, you can change the text up here as you like. OK, all right, let's finish up with this lesson by adding a couple of reflection or exit slips. OK, and let's have one of these ones. OK, which asks students to reflect on the activities of the day. Once you're ready to start the lesson, press on the button up here. And I'm going to first show you the instructor paste mode and then show you the student paste mode. OK. I've got both the teacher view as well as the student view available at the moment. The first thing that the instructor needs to do is just share the links. So we can go to joinpd.com and have students enter this code over here. Or you can go to copy link and then share the entire link with students. So let's enter here. Pair Deck will then ask students how they're feeling today. They can answer or they can skip the question. OK, so then we can start the presentation. So the first question that will be asked for students is, is it possible for humans to travel to the moon in one month? They can go ahead and answer the question, yes or no. OK, and once they have pressed the answer, their slide is not going to change until the instructor changes their slide. OK, so the instructor can take a look at all responses. They can even share it with the class if they like. So I can see that, yes, that was me. OK, or they can choose to just keep it to themselves, but address these um, misconceptions along the way. Let's go to the next slide. So once the instructor moves slides, the student will also see that as well. The next question is draw or type two things that you already know about yesterday's topic. So students can go ahead and draw or they can go ahead and type their response. OK, so I, oops, I know blah, blah, blah. Okay. Again, the instructor can go ahead and take a look at multiple responses by pressing the button over here. And there can be a list view, a grid layout, or an overlaid layout where you can see multiple responses at the same time. OK, let's move along. This next question is a critical thinking question. And we'll just move it along so students can solve this question. They can draw. So for example, this would be x equals to 4. Or they can type their responses, so something like the first thing is to divide by 2. And then they can shift their text box around, or they can change the color of the text. Okay. And of course, the instructor is able to view the responses. OK, and students can do a graph. So when is x always equal to 1? So let's have a line for this, and we'll make it a red line. OK, something like that. That's when x is always equal to 1. And we'll just move it along. We can do some lines again mantle in a core, so forth. OK, Spanish speaking countries, so they can shift these little pins around. OK, and drop it where countries speak Spanish. And the last activity is a reflection activity. So once we are finished, we'll just end. OK, and we can name this session. So
So this will be a testing session and you can publish student takeaways. So I'll show you what that means in a moment. Let's save and end this. Okay, and we can share the takeaways as well. Once we publish the takeaways, students will receive their responses in a Google Doc in their drive. So here is my response. And in part one, there will be some space for students to summarize their thoughts on the lesson. And this is pretty much their notes from the lesson. So they don't need to have um, their book to write their answers as well. We've already saved it onto a doc for them. In part two, there are responses that they use for the lessons. So if they got it wrong, for example, they can have some space to take notes about it. Okay, so we can see there is the slide and then the response and just some space for notes for all of the different slides. So this is super useful. So all of that comes under an instructor paced activity mode. We can also have a student paced mode where students are moving through the slides at their own pace. So I'll show you what that looks like as well. Student pace mode is very simple. You just need to share a link with students and then they'll be able to flick through the slides at their own pace. So let's open up this link to take a look. So here we're in the student pace mode and the same thing, we'll have a question which asks, how are you feeling today? So let's answer this and then begin these slides. So the first question is the same. And then once they've answered, they can just flip through the slide. Okay. And as you can see, it's the same thing. The only difference is that students are doing it at their own pace. So here we can have some text boxes and my first idea is blah, blah. Okay, and essentially they'll be able to end their slides and then once every student is finished, you can then publish the um, takeaways as you done in the instructor mode and then students will be able to see the Google Doc with a summary of how they went in the lesson as well. Last but not least, it's very likely that you'll want to review the lessons that you've done previously. So let's go into this icon over here and you'll be able to review your sessions. Here we are in review session. You can go ahead and open up the session again or you can go to the teacher dashboard to take a look at student responses. And once you're happy with that, press the three dots over here to end the session. Once you've ended the session, you can post the takeaways, you can take a look at the responses in a spreadsheet, or you can just archive the session. Thank you for watching this video. I hope that you got some ideas on how to use Pear Deck to make your lessons interactive and engaging. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up and be sure to subscribe to Class Notes for more videos like this in the future. Until next week, see you later and have a good day. Bye.